I want to welcome you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me. My name is Yaga Diamond, and I am the host of this show today. Now listen, okay. <laughs> we got amazing artists on the show. You guys know that. But today we have legends. We got legends. We got legends. <laughs> and I'm just so very excited to have these guys back because, you know, it, it's like you develop that relationship and then you just want to see them succeed. And that's exactly what's happening. Check this out for yourself. That's right. I want to be closer and who here and say, hey, Tony, what's up? What's going on? How's everybody hey. doing? And we got, <laughs> we got Eric here. Welcome to the oh, show. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, Guys, thank you guys so much for coming on. You guys have a new song out. Oh yeah. God. And it's going well. Very well. Oh, my gosh. Eric, I have to say, man, how you hit those high notes like that? What? I have to. I have to. Uh, I'm like, that's a guy. I have to, I have to <laughs> squeeze. I have to squeeze. <laughs> I, have to, I have to squeeze it out. Oh my gosh. So who wants to tell a story of how you guys figured out how to do this? Because this is an amazing collaboration. Okay. Let me, let me tell you how, how it went. Yeah. Yeah. I had, um, I had been invited to do a residency for Glenn. Uh, Glenn Jones had a residency down in Chicago at the, uh, at the, uh, what's that called? The city winery. And so um, they, he had me come down there on a Saturday and uh, we performed together. And the way that Glenn performs his residency is he comes out, he does 30 minutes. And then, you know, I, I came out in the middle of his show. I performed about 20, 25 minutes. Then him and I did Love Train and I went off and he finished up his, his set. And when I came off stage, Glenn said, um, Eric, we should do a song together. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, okay, cool. We'll do a song together. That's fine. I'm with it. Whatever you want to do. So then he said, no, seriously, we need to do a song together. And he said, and uh, it, it, it should be a remake. And I said, uh, okay. So, you know, I have a radio show and, you know, Tony has a radio show too. But I have a radio show. And so I was playing some records and I played I Want to Be Closer by Switch. And that's when it hit me. I said, wow, that's a that's a good record. So I was trying to find records and trying to find records, trying to find records. And I kept it and, and Switch was still in the back of my head. And I called a friend of mine named Devil's Valentine. We talked for a minute. And I was telling him that Glenn and I was going to do a remake. And he said the record switched too. And I said, yeah, that's a great record. I think Glenn would be really, that would be really good for us to do. Now, take in mind, y'all, y'all, I already knew that I could do the part. I mean, because that's actually where I'm comfortable at. I'm really comfortable in singing my falsetto. I'm learning how to sing my natural. So, I called Glenn and I told him about the record and he was like, great. He said, perfect. He said, that record right there, that's the record that um, made me want to start singing secular music. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna try to make this uh, quick. Um, so I knew there was a saxophone part in there that, I, that, I, that needed to be done. So I, we did like a big, a big huge festival. And Kirk Whalen was on the on the festival with us. And I went to Kirk's dressing room. I called Glenn and I went to Kirk Whalen's dressing room and I said, Kirk, me and Glenn got this song we're about to do. We would like for you to play on it. And he said, fine, he'd do it. But then again, you know, they, they, when it came to the particulars, it got a little, little weird. So I so we didn't do it with Kirk. Then I called Gerald Albright. Gerald Albright couldn't do it. He was on the road. I called um, Walter Beasley. He said that he would do it. And then that didn't fall through. And then I called Najee. And that didn't fall through. You know, then both guys said they would do it. It just didn't fall through. 
And I remember Tony Exum used to used to send records to me to play on my radio show because he's an independent artist. And I remembered that. And so what I did was I reached out to Tony via Joe Mason because Joe Mason had just saw Tony perform live in Las Vegas. And he was telling me how how much of a fantastic performer that he was. So I I uh, reached out to Tony, you know, um, on his Instagram and asked him, would he would he want to do that with me and Glenn? Tony, hands down, just said yes. He didn't think about it. Nothing. He just said, yeah, I do it. And I said, um, OK, I'm going to send the record to you. And um, look now, just keep the essence of the record now. Don't try to because, you know, new artists like to try to make their mark. You know, they want people to know how, how great they are, you know, stuff like this. So I said, Tony, just keep the essence of the record because the record is already the body of work is already there. And uh, I am a fingers crossed because take in mind, now, I've never even shook Tony's hand. I never met Tony before. And so I, I had my fingers crossed and sent the record to Tony. And I said, now, what I'm going to do is now you just keep that record. Keep it sexy. Keep it like it like it already is. But I'm going to give you 16 bars at the end of the record and you can be Tony X. Now, then I need you to be Tony X. And I sent the record to Tony. Tony sent the record back. And it was butter. I mean, when I tell you he blew that out the water and we were just so happy. I sent it to Glenn. I had I couldn't wait to send it to Glenn. I must have had the record 15 minutes. I sent the record to Tony. I mean, to uh, Glenn. And Glenn was like, well, who is that playing sax? I said, it's this kid, Tony Exum Jr., from uh, Colorado Springs, like that. And he said, wow. And, you know, and it's just, it's, it's, it's just the way God planned it. Um, one thing you can't do, that I learned that you can't do, is you have to trust God. You can't, you know, you can order the steps. You can try to move the way you want to move all you want to. But once God ordered your steps, then those are steps you have to take. And Tony was a, was a godsend because his name it's just ringing bells now. I mean, uh, I mean, what he did to that record was, and it gave us so much life, and it gave it not not that me and Glenn didn't. It's just that he did. You know what I mean? It, it had life to it, and Tony just added on to that, and the record became what it is. And that's how I want to be closer was birth for Glenn, Tony, and myself, hmm. because it was it, it started out being Glenn's idea. Because Glenn wanted me to come out and do more more dates with him, because the show that I did was kind of was, was pretty good, but he wanted my name to mean something to the ticket. He wanted my name to mean something to you know so that we could sell tickets and so that um, you know so it'd be business. And Tony, Tony been going around the country performing. This is just going to make the this is just going to make the package that much tighter. You know, what I'm saying it's just going to it's going to be worth more. And uh, that's how that record was was birthed. Wow, 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 wow! And so, what was it like, Tony, to get a phone call, or actually an Instagram DM? Okay, because right, yeah, that was on the back, the back end of Instagram on the DMs, because that's where the the happenings happen. <laughs> 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 in, the DM. Like, in the DM. <laughs> what was it like, Tony, to get a message from the OJs? Eric Nolan, what what was that like for you? That was a that was a, a, a pleasant surprise. I was not expecting that. It was totally unexpected, you know. And he's right. I had sent him some records. He had played uh, he had played a song that I did with a former label mate. Uh, her name is Erica Kane, and we had did a record uh, at your best. You are love. You know the classic Isley Brothers Aaliyah joint. Yeah. And I played. She already had it out. I added sax to it, and he had played that recently. And so I sent him some other stuff. And so um, I was like, wait a minute. OJ's Eric, you know, I'm looking like, because I knew the name, because I'm a big fan of the OJ. So I knew who he was. I've seen him with the OJ's, you know, when I was younger. I saw them when they came to Colorado back in the late 90s. So, you know, um, and of course, I've seen the fight and temptations and seen videos and stuff. So, I, of course, I knew who the brother was and I knew he had, you know, we were already connected on Facebook and um, IG. So to get a call from him, to play something was different. I was like, wow. 
So it's one of those situations where you got to like, you got to call your pops because, you know, <laughs> that's who, you know, introduced me to the OJ's music. I'm like, dad, one of the OJ's just called me to do the song. He's like, what? I said, yeah. He said, oh my goodness, that's got to be huge. And so um, me being the old soul that I am, and, and, you know, I think sometimes when you play this music, you, you're familiar with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff that's out there. So when he told me what record it was, I was like, oh yeah, you know, cause Switch was a staple in my household. When I was a little kid, my aunties, some of my female cousins were teenagers. So Switch was like always playing because everybody was in love with Bobby DeBarge, you know? So <laughs> I used to hear that record all the time as a little boy went on. He, we got on the phone. He was like, all right, man. Like he just said, keep the essence of the record. It was a pleasant surprise, but I remember when I went in the studio, I was just trying to make sure I did it right. So I listened to the original record and originally I had recorded on tenor saxophone like the record. But when he said, okay, give me Tony Exum, my, I guess, secret weapon or, you know, what, what has made me stand out as an artist in the, in the, the world of contemporary jazz is my sound on soprano. And I did like three passes. And then I said, you know what, let me just, cause I was nervous. So I knew how huge this record was going to be and what kind of impact it could have. And I, I remember closing my eyes and just pretending I was on stage with them, you know, cause I'm, I'm definitely more of a live performer, you know, than a studio guy. So, um, I just kind of focused and created a mindset of me being on stage and that's what you heard. So I did that pass that you hear on the record in, in one try. And, uh, that was it. So, um, and I was sitting thinking, I hope he likes it. I hope he likes it. You know, so when I got the reaction from, I was very, I felt very accomplished. And for me as a younger artist, as a, as an up and comer still in some circles, you know, it's, um, it's definitely an honor to be on, on, on track with these guys. And then to do such a classic song, to bring back that, that vibe, you know, that that's what a lot of music is missing nowadays. So, you know, now we get videos on, on, on Facebook of, of, of the ladies driving in their car, singing at the top of their lungs, you know, <laughs> and, and enjoying the record. Like, like we, you know, they like used to do, we all had that auntie that liked the slow jam when he was growing up and she starts singing while she at the stove or, song come on the radio and you can't stand it because you're a little kid but auntie just loves that song or mom or grandma whoever it is you know and it's like it, it, it cracked me up when i saw that video because it reminded me of that time when that's what we used to do and so it's a timeless song as it is and we just breath you know we were able to breathe new life into it and uh that's that's the ultimate honor right there wow wow i i just i think it's amazing like when i get when i get messages from eric i'm like oh Eric, what's up? <laughs> like it's a <laughs> piece of what I do. <laughs> that shouts out to my girl Yaya. Love what you're doing. Keep blessing the world with that beautiful smile, that beautiful voice. It's your man Shook Jackson. I appreciate you. That's right. Glenn, welcome to the show, yeah. man. We were talking Thank good you. things about you. Good things. All good things. Oh wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to know that. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> so we were talking about how you guys got to do this song with each other. This is, I mean, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, uh, things just seem to unfold the way they should, you know, and sometimes that that's a sign of, you know, uh, God doing what he does. You know, um, I've been in the business a long time and I've chased a lot of things, but I just, started saying to myself that I was gonna let things unfold and let him do what he does. And um, to end up, you know, hooking up with Eric and us talking about doing a record, you know, and us, you know, getting a chance to do it. Cause you know, like Eric always says, people will tell you anything, man. I had so many people say, yo man, you know, I, I really like, you know, what you do and we are gonna hook up, we are gonna do this, we are gonna do that. And uh, I call those people Amadou. You know, mm. I'm a dude. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm a dude. Ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> you know, ain't gonna do nothing. You know, but um, I I was serious about when I approached him, and uh, he called me and said, "Yo, G, I know the song we should do. You know, I want to be closer." And that was a song that affected me early on. I think I must have been. Well, I ain't gonna tell you how old I was when the song came out, but I loved the song from the beginning. And I said that I want to do this song one day. And uh, it inspired me to, 
make the transition from gospel to R and B. I, I just um, I was doing gospel when I was I was writing a uh, very contemporary gospel, you know, and uh, back then it seemed like that kind of gospel really hadn't broken through because you had people like Rance Allen and the Winans and stuff. And I just wanted my records to sound a certain way. So I said, well, you know, I'm going I'm to make this transition. And when Eric brought that song to the table, I said, now you're talking. And um, it is so classic. It's very classic. And, you know, it, it's like there's some things that are just timely but timeless that will never, never die. And I feel like this is one of those songs and, uh, you know, working and doing the record with Eric has been a pleasure. And then he brought he brought our, our new little brother into the circle, you know, Mr. Tony X. And my, you know, Eric sent me to try, you know, because he had done his vocal and I had done, a, you know, a, a reference vocal. And the only thing I said when I hit it back, I mean, I said, man, who is this dude? Man, who is that old sax, man? Oh, my God. And I was talking to my friend the other day um, from Surface, Mr. David Pitt Conley. And he had some, he had so much uh, love for what Eric did. He was like, man, that dude, that sex player is crazy. You know, so uh, it's an amazing record. It's, it's, it's great chemistry because when you work with a person for the first time, you don't know what, what it's going to be like. You know, you don't know what you're going to get out of that. And it just worked. So I think that that was, it was meant to be. I think mm, it was meant yes. to be. Yeah, that is that is amazing. I want to be closer. I'm trying to put it behind us because I want people to see that this is just this is amazing. I mean, okay, so I have to I have to chime in here because Eric, you just I mean, the vocals was just like up in the stratosphere. Like, how did he do that? I am a woman and I can't do that good. Hey, I'm a woman and I can't even get that high that sometimes. It's like, okay, maybe, I, I, I don't know how maybe he got in touch. Maybe he got in touch with his feminine side or something. I don't know, man. Oh <laughs> man. So we all got like, that. Glenn, me, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn has me he has me taking this uh he has me taking this this super juice that he uh always tells me to play. You know, he had me taking uh uh ginger crystals and <laughs> medicine balls. Uh, medicine balls that before before that, yeah. I, yeah, I drink some medicine ball before I go into the to the booth and game is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you did that, man. You did that. He did that. He did that. And you know, and yeah. it's so it was it's just so beautiful the song. I had to hear it a few times because Joe sent it to me. He says, Yeah, yeah, listen to this. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so who's on that sax? He right. was like, oh, that was Tony. Yeah. I said, Tony? Oh, go, Tony. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all got Elder Barge? <laughs> I was like, who's who, who those eyes? Who, uh? I was like, what the heck? Okay. All right. Go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. All right. It was just amazing. I think the song is just amazing. I'm so very excited for the progress of the song and how it is taken off. Um, are you guys going on the road? What is next for you guys? Are you guys gonna like perform the song together? We're that's to. my yeah, that's yeah. my intention. I mean, you know, we're trying to put together some dates now. You know, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I feel like this has come along at the right time because I'm just in the mood to do something different and to do something like this with you know two very talented and even you know good guys, nice brothers. You know, just you know, that means a lot, man, you know, because you got a lot of idiots out there that they so caught up in who they are and who they're supposed to be. And it's got to be, you know, they got to play the star card, you know, they got to, you know. But with these two cats, it's not like that. You know, we all just making music and and being thankful for the opportunity to make it, you know. So uh, we're going to do some dates. Right, 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 fellas? Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. Glenn. Glenn and I was talking this morning. We was talking this morning about doing some dates, and we were thinking about, um, you know, when we get to certain places, we'll we'll put together a, a nice rhythm section, and uh, and we just we just have Tony be the the MD, because that way we know we we we'll know the music would be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to Tampa. Come to Tampa. Come to Tampa. Come to Tampa. Hey, you know, you know. FLA, that's my home state, man. That's where I'm from. I, I'm from Florida, so I wouldn't have a problem with that. I oh, live yeah. in Sarasota. And no, Glenn, Eric knows that if you come to Tampa, I will definitely come. Yeah, and, I have to, and I have to give you a hug because Eric knows I like hugs. 
right. I'm, I'm with that. I'm with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like eggs. <laughs> yeah. I learned to, I learned to hug when I was in church. You know, they taught me how to hug. You know, you, you always you gotta you. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, Tony, you guys did such an amazing job. Is there anything that you want to say to people? Because I can vouch for every single last one of these gentlemen here that they are not only humble, but they are down to earth, great people. And if if I had to say it, I, I wouldn't even put their careers in front of their personalities because they are so much more than their careers. There's so much more than their music because they're like that friend that you've always wanted. So let me ask you a question. Okay. Me? Because these, yeah, you. Okay. So because these two, these two guys right here, it's so refreshing being in the business, especially as long as I have, Glenn have, and Tony. We meet so many people and even, um, uh, let's just say for the lack of a better word, celebrities. And the personalities just, you know, you don't even want to really, talk to them anymore you don't care if you meet them or see them or anything again right nice. so you got these people right now have you actually interviewed because you interview a lot of people yeah yeah have you and you don't have to say no names but have you uh, interviewed people that just gave you that air that just gave you a you know like you know what i don't really have to interview this person again you know because their spirit is just not you know what i mean yeah, because because when see when I when I talk when I talk to Glenn, it's it's like I mean even though I've 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 been in Glenn's company and I've met him and and so so we we've known each other's names and we know each other for like t tens of years, right? But to actually interact with him is like I've been knowing him since I was in high school, and Tony right. is so if Tony is so. Um, Tony is when I say giving, he 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 wants to learn so much, and he wants to absorb so much because he wants to be the cons consummate professional. You know what I'm saying? Because he have people that he look up to, and that you know like the Najees and the Walter Beasley's and those guys too. But Tony, he's, he's still a sponge. Do you have have you have you interviewed people that you like? This spirit is just really off. Yeah, you know, and that's so, no one's ever asked me that question. I don't think that people understand the the sheer numbers of people that I've interviewed from 2006 all the way till today. Um, and yeah, I have, on and off camera, you know, mm. written and video and audio, I have. And it's usually, and I'm going to go there with you, it is usually the people who are just coming up that give me the issue, not the people who have made it. Mm. Mm. Which is very interesting because that is the uh, one of the reasons that they don't make it all the way. They don't climb that, that ladder per se all the way because no one wants to deal with them because of their attitude right now. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's not, I haven't had, I, I can't even remember someone I've interviewed that is already there, that has made it, that understands the, how would I say, happenstance of popularity or fame or making it or getting to that. Because there's so few people that do make it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So being in that, being in that category is humbling. I have not mm -hmm. had anyone uh, who has been in that category that I didn't want to have back on the show again. It's usually the people who are trying to get up there that think that they've already kind of made been it there. Mm -hmm. That that I don't really want back on the show. Mm. So yeah, that's well, it. well you you yeah. dodged well you've dodged some bullets then. <laughs> yeah, because we got them. <laughs> you, know, you know what? It's so I have, and it's like it, I get. You know, it's it's Joe from Never Stop Entertainment. It's Miriam. It's uh, Sonia. It's it's a lot of different people that I work with that know who I want on the show. Okay, I okay. want the show to be a positive show. I want it to be an inspiration, and I want 
people to see Tony and you and, and Glenn, people who have made it and, and show them that you don't have to be stuck up. You don't have to be this, mm-hmm. this arrogant person. You can still be a sweetheart and mm-hmm. be successful. And that's what I want. And so they don't send me those people. So that's and that I, see, and that's, that's the, and that's the beauty. Yeah, that, but that's the beauty of it because yeah. when you have, and I say this, when you have a powerhouse like a Glenn Jones, and Glenn Jones is very well respected, definitely from now not only through the business, but as a vocalist. Like when people say, when people talk about you know the fantastic vocalist, his name always come up i mean always it's always like you know well you know you know you're not a glenn jones or anything you know what i mean like you you know what i'm saying like he's the point of reference yeah and uh and he's made and he's made his mark and he's you know he did you know i think and and i i say this loosely i'm i'm sorry y'all y'all i'm not trying to uh, take over the interview but i i say this loosely i think solo artists are special i think they're so special because it's just them and they only have to rely on them they don't have what i have i have eddie and i have walter you know what i mean so i got two people that i can feed off of i got two people that you know that have made their mark who've had platinum success and i'm so happen to be you know in in the middle of that of that greatness but with a glenn jones a teddy pendergrass a al green they just have themselves to rely on. And whatever happens that day, because I watched Glenn when I was uh when I was in Chicago and in his preparation. And he's he's so he's so so uh I don't want to use the the word humble, he's so 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 uh into wanting to give a good performance. And he and, and I and I watched his kind of makeup because I because I want to be a solo artist at some point. So <laughs> So I, I watched him and he gets into this little mode where he knows that it's it's a it's on him. If it don't if it don't happen, it's because he didn't do it. Yeah. And I have the utmost respect for people like 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 him because it's just him. And everything that happens mm-hmm. on that stage, it, it has to it has to resonate from him. He set the mood, he has to set how that show goes, how the feeling goes, how the crowd feels. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I saw you do some solo stuff too, so I'll try it. I see, I see you. Hey, hey, hey well, but look, yeah, 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 I've seen it. That's that's so. That's what's so great about what we are doing and what what we're about to do. I don't have to worry about all of that myself. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to lay that on you and Tony. You know, we're going to do it together. <laughs> and another thing is that the fact that you have been around greatness with the OJs, that makes you special because you've been with them for 28 years. And there's a reason for that. Yes, you right. special too, my brother. You know, that's it's, you know, there's a lot of brothers that wish that they were in your shoes, man. Trust me. Yeah. You know? Thank you. I know, right? Do they need a female member? Yeah. <laughs> Do they need a saxophone player? <laughs> right. for me, no, let me say this for me, you know, trust me, like like Eric was saying, you know, I'm still a sponge, I'm still learning, I'm still growing. You know, I've been in the business for a while myself, but you know, I'm I'm definitely grassroots, you know, coming from Colorado Springs and building my brand to be a national artist took a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of craziness. Smooth jazz is very competitive. It's ninety percent saxophone, so you know, you're you're and this is the only genre sometimes where you're almost competing against the people you grew up with. And that's why this record means a lot to me because Eric went to four of my buddies and my musical heroes. So it's like this was meant to be. Because they could have yep. easily, you know, did this. And so for to go to the, the cats and they couldn't do it and it and they've all been congratulatory. Every last one of them has been congratulatory to me after hearing the record saying, you know what, Tony? And Walter said it best. He said that record was meant for you. Hello, y'all. This is Louis Cassis Jr. And I'm here with Yaya Diamond. I'm here for the color purple, color brown, the color white, and the color green. Let's watch this and support it 100%. It's our turn. Enjoy. God bless. 
Well, yeah, yeah. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try to. Don't try to uh, dodge. Don't try to dodge because I because I saw you performing. So don't try to get out of that. <laughs> I, oh, saw you, I saw you do your. I saw you do your little dance. I see your little background singers. I saw it all. Now don't try. It. <laughs> all right. Yo, I yeah, didn't know Glenn. that. Didn't oh know. yeah, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn. She's, yeah. she's a solo artist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She never, she never ever said that to me, and and I've interviewed with her a couple of times before, and she never even mentioned that, not that I recall. No, um, she didn't mention it to me either. I, I, I uh, I stumbled on some footage. <laughs> she oh, it. some footage. <laughs> so she got footage. Yeah, yeah. She got footage. Hey, you have to share. Got you have to share. <laughs> you got to share that, man. You got to share that, bro. <laughs> she that's why she's. That's why she's doing that. <laughs> Well, goodness gracious, guys. I want to thank you guys so much. This has been such a pleasure, and it's always a pleasure to have each and every one of you on the show. I I look forward to having you guys on the show. I know, I know that this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Just the That's beginning. right. Yeah, we hope so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, Glenn, Glenn, yeah. Glenn, Glenn and uh, Tony, they, they said it best. We, we, this is just magic. It's not nothing. We didn't plan it. Nobody put us together. Nobody said, you know, this would be a good tandem or, you know, good trio. Uh, you know, uh, Tony calls us get, <laughs> he calls us, you know, he calls our group the get machine. So, but it's, it's, it's like, this was, this was heaven sent. This is not nothing that was, that was planned, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it spearheaded from Glenn Jones and for him to even come up with that idea, for him to even, you know, out of, you know, just come up with it out of his spirits. That says a lot about him as a, as an individual. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm just hey. so excited. Hey, you're my man. You know that. I, you know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know, man. I know. They've, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. always been yeah, one yeah. way. Yeah, Ever yeah. since I met him, he's always been one way, Yaya. He's always been one way. And, you know, Yaya, what I love, what I what I really, 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 this is the most attractive part about Glenn Jones to me, is that he is incredibly, you know, you, you know, you got the humble side, but then you got the street side of Glenn. You know, he's has, he has the street side. <laughs> He's very. <laughs> he's very <laughs> hey, you saw that this morning, didn't you? <laughs> and I, and I, hey, had to say, yo, 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 dude, don't worry about it, man. It's all right. He had to calm me down. <laughs> so I love, it. I love it about yeah. it because because Eddie and Walt, Eddie and Walt, because they because Eddie and Walt is from the hood. And so they know when I got in the group, I was very green. So everything was just so hood about me. They had to kind of like teach me how to be a professional. So when I talked to Glenn, I could recognize the professional part about Glenn. But then I saw, then I knew there was an edge. I knew there was an edge. And then when him and I got to talking, and I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be my man right here, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can let, I can let my hair down now. Yeah. <laughs> I can let my hair down now. No doubt, no doubt, bro. That's that, yeah, that's that yeah, guy right yeah. there, Jack, for real. Woo. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, it's just been, so, again, it's been such a pleasure having you guys, and I wish we could stay on a lot longer. You guys are going to have to come back, especially oh, when you come down to Tampa. We will. You gotta you know. Yeah, you got you got to come and interview. You got to come and interview the show. You got to come and get footage. I do, yeah. and you know I will. I will be there. Right. I will. I will yeah. be there. I'm alive. I will be there. Okay. All right. And I never come alone. So give me. Two we know. Seconds. We know, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you guys. Thank you guys so yeah. much. Congratulations on everything. It's just such a pleasure. I wish you nothing but more, and more, and more success. You know that. Uh, but I want to be. I want to be closer. I want to be closer. Uh, Glenn Jones featuring Eric Nolan, and we introducing Tony Exum Jr. There you go, and it's right up there in the corner. We're gonna put that right in the middle, right, right there, so you guys can see that and see the beautiful cover that they have. And you guys just don't want to miss that. That is just a. It's just a beautiful song.
Okay. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think it's point zero right. zero six cents that you get per. I mean, if you have it all night long, just just put it on. Just let it go. All right. Repeat. Then they can at least get ten dollars. That's right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until yeah. next time, guys. Bye. <laughs> bye. See y'all. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube or Instagram. Thank you for watching.